Phil Pagliazzo was one of dozens of brass era car enthusiasts to gather at the Waltham Museum last week to trade stories about their Mets automobiles. Those in attendance were treated to a slideshow by museum director and Mets car expert Al Arena. The story of the rise and fall of the Mets Automobile Company is a little-known part of Waltham history. Arena explained how entrepreneur Charles Metz founded the Waltham Manufacturing Company in 1893 to make bicycles, and eventually became one of the most prolific car producers east of Detroit. This 10-seated bike, called the Ori 10, weighed 350 pounds. Only one was ever made. After Metz left the company in 1901, New Blood began fabricating early cars under the Orient name, including this 1905 Orient Buckboard. Although ideas for transmissions and engines back then were prolific, not every one was a winner, and the company went bankrupt in 1908. When Charles Metz returned, he created the Metz Plan Car, using leftover parts from the Orient models. It was uh, sold in a kit in 14 different uh, sections. You would order one section, such as a frame. They would send that out to you. You would put it together. Then you'd order the next section. The plan car sold well, allowing Metz to amass enough capital to launch the fully assembled Model 22 in 1912, a four-cylinder friction-drive car priced at roughly $400. Collector Eric Hart tooled around in his father's 22 when he was only 12. He said that the car was competitive with the Ford Model T at the time. Like many of the Mets cars, it required a little know-how to operate. You did have to think about it. Uh, for the relatively lower powered cars too, you had to think about um, the terrain you were driving on and, and operate the car to anticipate uh, maybe steep hills ahead or things of that nature. Everything changed when the Germans sank the Lusitania in 1915. Metz's German last name was suddenly unpatriotic and sales dropped off dramatically. Before going out of business in 1922, he tried to change the name of his cars to Waltham, but it was too little too late. Collectors and enthusiasts at the event came to hear stories, but also to tell a few of their own. This is a picture of an original cardboard that was hanging in a showroom for the Orient Buckboard. In the background it shows the Waltham train station and the owner of the company with his secretary and he is demonstrating how the car can be driven by a woman. Unfortunately, the way we have heard the story is once his wife found out that he was in this picture with his girlfriend, that was the demise of the company. I like brass air cars because it's the beginning of history of the automobile and the automobile has made this country. Michael Patris, owner of two Metzes and a third generation collector, traveled all the way from Los Angeles, where he runs the Mount Low Preservation Society. Through his interest in railroads, he learned that one of the Metz cars was driven over railroad tracks to prove that it could go over anything. Several years ago, he came across a 100% original Metz. I subsequently found a car in a barn in Vermont. Uh, it had been parked there since 1948. It has the original paint, the original top, the original seats. Everything is original. It's an unmolested car. 9,000 original miles and it has the original odometer so that's how we know it and it all still functions. So we ended up buying the car in Vermont, bringing it to Southern California so we have documented what is actually right on the car, what is not, and we have shared that information with other Mets owners so we can have their cars be totally correct as well. Some of the collectors plan to bring their Mets cars to historic Waltham days on July 11th. Until then, museum visitors can learn the Mets story in pictures, auto parts, and in documents. For Waltham Newswatch, this is Chris Wangler. And we have two Mets automobiles, uh, both 1914s, both Model 22s, both four doors. Uh, one has 9,000 original miles on it uh, with the original odometer. Nothing has been ever touched on the car except spark plug, tie, uh, spark plug wires, the tires, and the tubes. Original top, original interior, original paint, uh, everything is 100% original. Uh, so we're very proud to have that. That came from a barn in uh, Vermont uh, several years ago, got parked there in 1948, and we acquired it about two years ago. Uh, the previous car that we had, that we still do, that I was thinking of restoring, was incomplete and we didn't know what needed to be done to make it complete and restored. So in searching out the best original car, I found it and then it came up that it was for sale. So 
We have a nonprofit foundation in California. It's called the Mount Low Preservation Society. And in 1914, a METS was used as a publicity stunt from Los Angeles to drive along the right of way of a railroad uh, to show that this car could basically go anywhere, and indeed it did. So it's a lot of fun, and I enjoy it. It's nice to be here and finally meet some people and put some faces to some names. This is the short answer to the question. The long answer is because I did come from Southern California, I was actually here all day yesterday and I got to have Al Arena to myself and we not only got to go through the museum piece by piece, but we also went to go see the cars which are all in storage. And I think that if there's anything good that I got out of this as far as networking with people and things of that nature, the other thing is that the people of Waltham really need to get the city council and, and everybody else behind this museum and allow it to expand. There are so many great artifacts that are here that are in storage that need to be displayed and shared with the public. And, and I think that if they step forward and continue to do what they've done, not only provide this wonderful building, which they have done, but also allow them to have the garage bays in the adjacent part of the building and maybe the second story, that would help these people. And I know with all the enthusiasm of the Mets owners that you saw here today, that will be a great impetus to help maybe get some more support behind the expansion project. But a lot of things that were interesting as far to me as the expansion of, of Mets from bicycles into automobiles, the several different automobiles they had that simply didn't work before they finally ended up with the vehicles like we have now. Same thing with the motorcycles. I had no idea they had a steam car. I had no idea they had an electric car. So there are a lot of really interesting things that we'll take back with us and we'll expand our knowledge and share with the public as well. Subsequent owners had a METS automobile in 1914 run on the right-of-way on the railroad tracks to prove that this car could go anywhere. That was one of their publicity things, the car that could go absolutely anywhere. So we wanted one of these cars as a parade car. We had one donated to us from Ohio. It was not original. I started scrounging around to see who knew anything about METS. I got in contact with Al Arena here at the Waltham Museum. He was very helpful with supplying other names of METS owners and people, and I was in the search of the most original original METS car known so I could document what my car needed to have to be right. I subsequently found a car in a barn in Vermont. Uh, it had been parked there since 1948. It has the original paint, the original top, the original seats. Everything is original. It's an unmolested car. 9,000 original miles and it has the original odometer so that's how we know it and it all still functions. And once we got in contact with those people we were simply going to photograph that car to figure out what we needed to do to make our car right. And all the other METS owners had a lot of ideas about what was right and what wasn't. And I thought, well, I don't want to rely on hearsay. I want to deal in fact. So some of the people here at the museum and some of the materials that were here will help, were helpful in dispelling some of the rumors. And so, uh, subsequently, we did further research and found a lot of things that people believed for many years were not true. So we ended up buying the car in Vermont, bringing it to Southern California, so we have documented what is actually right on the car, what is not, and we have shared that information with other METS owners so we can have their cars be totally correct as well.